Okay, so this video follows video number seven, and I'm gonna be solving example 3.1, which is the conservation of mass through ports. All right, in this problem, we have steady incompressible flow through the device shown, and we wanna figure out the magnitude and direction of the volume flow rate through port three. So we could think of this as a small piping attachment where basically we have some incoming and outgoing flow, and then we have a little port, and we know its area, and so if we know the conditions at the inlet and the outlet, we can figure out exactly how much of this flow is going out through that port at the top there. Okay, so valuable but fairly simple calculation to do here. All right, first thing we do is figure out which equation to use. So it says it's incompressible, so we can make that simplification right off the bat. Then we look at our page above in special cases here, and we also notice the velocities across each of these ports. That's just given as a single value, so we therefore can make the assumption that that's an average velocity. And I mean, this is where we can use, you know, rational deduction here, right? So if you needed to integrate over that area, I mean, you'd have to have an expression of that velocity that changed over the area. So because we're given values here, it's logical to assume those are average values. There's really no way we could solve this problem unless those are average values given, right? So we have incompressible, uniform velocity. And so that means we can use that summation equation from video number seven, the one that I boxed a bunch of times and highlighted. Okay, so let's write that out. Helps if we sketch out our control volume here. I'll do that in purple. All right, so we can see now, finally, what it means by the sum of the control surfaces. So we see for this control volume here, for example, we have these three very well-defined surfaces with openings, and the rest of our control volume is sealed. So now we understand why we say control surfaces. On a control volume like this, we have three, three openings. And this will vary based on the type of problem we're solving and the type of control volume we pick. So now when we take this sum, we consider each of these three control surfaces in turn here, and then we just sub in. Because this is our first example, I'll go through the dot product slowly here. So we look at control surface one, we see that the velocity vector is pointed inwards, but the normal to this area is pointed outwards. So therefore, it's negative V1 times A1. Control surface two, that's an outgoing velocity, and the normal vector of the area points outwards as well, so that one's positive. We don't know yet what it is at port three, so it's best if we just assign it a positive value now. That way we know if we calculate it as positive, it's outgoing. But if we find that it's negative, it'll be an incoming. Okay, so I've rearranged that. Now we can sub all that in and we actually have enough information that we can solve for the velocity of port three. However, we look at the question here. It says what's the magnitude and direction of the volume flow rate through port three. So we know the volume flow rate is the velocity times the area. So I'll rewrite that and substitute in and then we can figure out what it is. Okay, that's our answer there. We remembered, we assumed it was outwards. That negative sign there indicates, therefore, that it's actually an inwards flowing velocity. So this mass balance has helped us figure it out. We look at this port, we know what the volumetric flow rate must be to balance this off. So we'll write that below and then we're done.